Here we go. Proofs. Everybody's favorite part of geometry. I'm sure if you ask anybody who's taken geometry, they will tell you that their favorite part was proofs. So that's what unit two is. It's logic and proofs. So before we begin to really get into the proofs, we have to know a lot of vocab, a lot of definitions. So the first one we're going to start with here is inductive reasoning. Well, we need to know what inductive reasoning is. So inductive reasoning is making... No, please, no. There we go. Who I thought it wasn't going to write. Making a conclusion based on observations and patterns. So it's making a conclusion based on observations and patterns. A conjecture is a concluding statement A concluding statement reached using inductive reasoning. All right, so here's what I like to think about. I like to look at this as a visual, and I think of inductive reasoning as a funnel. So here's inductive reasoning. We make all, the, we look around the world and we make all these conclusions. We do. So we, we look at the world around us and then we start to see patterns and we put this in our heads. Okay, so everything that we've come up with and then it spits out a conjecture. So we look at all the patterns and observations and then in our head we form this, you know, this conjecture and that's what spits it out. So if you think about this as a funnel, that's kind of what it looks like. Um... So when would I use that in math? Well, here we go. Here is a pattern. I have to establish what is that pattern. And I need to make sure it fits the whole way through. So I'm subtracting 7, subtracting 7, subtracting 7. So it holds true. So then if I continue, 17 minus 7 is 10. 10 minus 7 is 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. And negative 11 minus 7 is negative 18. So I have established the next term in my patterns, and my conjecture is now going to say that to generate the next term, subtract 7 from the previous term. Previous term. Okay, so now I have put into words what my pattern is said. I can look at that and I can see, okay, I subtract seven, but now the conjecture is putting it into words. So if I look at, let's go down here to number um, three. I add, add three, uh-oh, four plus nine is not three, four plus three is not nine, nine plus, what, what is that? So sometimes it may take a second for us to think about this. All right, so one, four, nine, 16. When you look at those numbers, you should think those are perfect squares. So here's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. So this is 5 squared, which is 25, 6 squared, uh, which is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, and 9 squared is 81. So patterns are not always easy to recognize just by adding or subtracting a number. You really got to look and see how am I going to form that pattern. So the conjecture here would be, each term, so to generate the next term, I would say to generate the next term, square, um, square the term. To generate the next term, square the term in the pattern. So here's my first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on. So there is my conjecture there. Um, let's do, um, all right, look at number four. We have A, D, G, J. What in the world could that be? Um, so I would start with the alphabet, A, and then I would see B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So it's skipping two letters. J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y. 
So that's how I'm going to get that pat. That's how I get the pattern. And my conjecture is going to say to generate the next term, skip two letters after the previous term. Okay, so that's what that's going to look like. So you can go through there and figure out the patterns, and then that's how we make our conjecture. All right, let's talk about another big word that we need here. And this is called a counterexample. A counterexample, it is an example that shows a conjecture is false. An example that shows our conjecture is false. All right, so we're going to look at this. So this is a conjecture. And a lot of times in life, you know, we think these things. We see all this information and we form patterns, maybe based on people. And we um, draw the wrong conclusions. And our conjectures are not always right about the people that we draw conclusions from. So you need to really think about that. So let's determine whether conjecture is true or false. And if it's false, we're going to provide a counterexample. So if I look at number one, the sum of any two consecutive integers is always odd. So um, what is a consecutive integer? Um, so it's three and four. That equals seven. Um, six and seven is going to be 13. 8 and 9 is 17. So that's true. Any two consecutive integers is always odd. That's a true statement. Number two, the product of two numbers is always larger than either number. Well, if I have 5 times 2, that's true, that's equal to 10. But what about if I have 1 half times 4? That's equal to 2. So that's not true. That's not true. So that is going to be false. And I have proved it right there. Um, number three, the product of two perfect squares is always a perfect square. That is true. That is true. Absolutely true. So one um, times four is four. And then if I take nine times four, it's going to be 36. So perfect squares will always equal another perfect square. Um, number four. The area of a rectangle is 6 meters. The dimensions must always be 2 meters by 3 meters. That's not true. What about a 1 by 6? That's 6 meter squares. So that's false because I can prove a 1 by 6. Um, so that's what it means by a counterexample. Um, number 5 is going to be false. Because what if you had negative 8? Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. So um, that's not less than negative 8. That's greater than. So that's going to be false. Um, vertical angles are never complementary angles. Well, that's not true. What about a vertical angle um, that both are 45? Both 45s are going to be 90, which are complementary. So that's not true. Um, number 7 is true. The product property makes it true. Number eight is true. Two angles supplementary to the same angle must be congruent. So if this is 120 and this is 60, two angles supplementary to the same angle over here, if 120 has to be supplementary to 60 here. So no matter what, that's going to be true. Um, number Nine, all state names have two syllables. No, false. I'm sure you could think of more. Uh, more. California has four. Maine has one. New Hampshire. So tons, tons of counterexamples there. Um, number 10, squaring a number and adding one will always produce an even number. Well, that's not true. What about if I square 10? 10 squared is 100 plus 1. 101 is not even. So that is false there. So here you can write your own um, conjectures and then trade with your partner, which you're watching this by yourself, so we won't do that part. Um, but you could um, come up with your own there. And um, we're going to stop this first video.